I am very happy to have tonight's guest in studio with me. He's a very talented comedian, the author of the New York Times bestseller, How to Be Black. He stole my title. And the host of the podcast, How to Citizen with uh, Baratunde, where he speaks with people working to improve society for the many. Please welcome Baratunde Thurston. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for being here. In person. <laughs> <laughs> I have no choice. <laughs> you had awesome. a choice. I did. You chose to be here. I did. I must be here. I'm contractually obliged, <laughs> but I'm really happy uh, when we can get someone to come uh, into the studio, it makes my day. Yeah. And so thanks for doing this. Thanks for getting me out of the house. You were married very recently. I was. During COVID. Yes. Yes. We took 2020. And we said we're going to change the headline on the whole year. And so 2020 is no longer just the year of COVID and loss and death and racial uprising. It's the year we got married. Oh, that's, that's nice. Really nice. Yeah. So is that what you're going to say? Is you're going to say it was the year we got married first? Or are you going to mention all the other stuff first? <laughs> we always have to mention it's a contractual <laughs> obligation, according to the thing we signed with the county. Did yeah. you put that all on the cake? Because that <laughs> yes. would be kind of a downer. Yes. <laughs> Um, well, congratulations. Uh, I'm very happy for you. you. And, and here's what I want to talk about. Uh, your podcast, there, as we know, there's a lot of podcasts out there. I think yours is very important, and I'm so glad that you're doing it. Uh, How to Citizen, uh, and, and it's all about having a positive impact. And one of the things that intrigues me about this or draws me to it naturally is that I, uh, I like to think a lot of people, we get worn down by the negativity out there right yeah. now, really worn down. And so what I like is that you are approaching this as it doesn't have to be this way and life could be a lot better and there are very simple things we can do yeah. to make our lives better. So first of all, how did this idea come about? Why did, is this, have you always been the person that wanted to make this kind of positive change? Kind of. Uh, I've been a news junkie my whole life. I've been about making the world better. My mother was a very political person mm -hmm. and wanted to make sure that I was involved in the world. So we right. went to marches together and we worked at soup kitchens together and we did all kinds of things together. So I, I think a lot of my life has led to making something like this. Yeah. But recently that negativity you talked about was getting to me. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a pretty positive person. Like my default setting is belief in people. Um, and the world was really challenging that orientation. Yeah. And continues to. Yes. Um, but what I held on to was we can make it better. And taking this word citizen, make it a verb instead of this legal. That's what's really interesting. Yeah. It's you, yeah you took it. Most people use it as a noun. Yeah. This is a citizen. That's a citizen. And you said, no, we need to citizen. Yeah. And I thought... I like that. Expound, please. Well, we live in this thing, allegedly, mm -hmm. called democracy, which means people power. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's us. This whole system of government, this whole way we interact with our neighbors and what we get out of society, we can change that. We can remix it and make it what we want. And I often forget, as open-minded and invested as I've been in trying to make change, you can get to feel depressed, angry, and... Uh, overwhelmed by the size of all these challenges. Yeah. So I also knew there was another story that the news wasn't telling us about the people working to make things better. And how do we find those people? What can they help us figure out how to do? So we are in our second season now, and we're taking on this whole thing about division, mm -hmm. but we're doing it through money, through the economy. Right. Uh, because the economy is one of the things that divides us most from each other. Folks who are doing really well, folks who are doing really badly, and it doesn't have to be that way. So we found some people building an economy that does a bit better for us. And my goal, our goal is you leave these episodes and you're like, I maybe didn't know that. And I have something I can do because yes. the news also has left me feeling so empty yeah. where I'm just like, I know I can scream. I definitely want to punch something right now. Right. But that's not helping in the, it has not helped in my community. It's not Sometimes helping. it helps. In the very <laughs> short term, Tony. There have been yes. a few, there are a few occasions every now and then where punching somebody or something does help. Yes. Uh, very rare. Very rare. I'm not recommending it. I don't want to make a categorical disclaimer. No, no, I, I, and I'm with you on that, <laughs> but occasionally the screaming and the punching, yeah. quite useful, yeah. uh, especially growing up in my family. Uh, <laughs> it got me out of some jams. You know, speaking of growing up, I want to talk first of all about your background and then go back to this, but you grew up in D.C. Yeah, the nation's I know capital. that, and um, you said you were a news junkie as a kid, mm -hmm. which 
Uh, some people describe themselves as an adult, as a news junkie. I don't often hear people say, I was a news junkie when I was a kid. Yeah. Describe yeah. how much of a news junkie were you? I was a very popular kid, first of all. Yeah, uh, I imagine. Super, super cool. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know. That guy's a really amazing football player, but that guy knows the news. He knows what's going on. <laughs> right? Like he's trying to inform the citizenry. What a democracy nerd. So mom comes back to my mom. We were in the car a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and we had NPR on a lot, and the local uh, station, WPFW, black-owned radio station out of D.C. Mm -hmm. We watched PBS. That was at my cable network, was public broadcasting. Right. The, the, so the, other the, kids were like, we gotta, we're gotta, we going to stay up late and watch some cable. It meant something erotic. For yeah. you, it, yeah, meant it meant information. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and I guess I got so far, so we uh, got the Sunday newspaper, uh -huh. and I would read it, like, cover to cover. That's great. The Washington Post. Um, my mom had a subscription to this very nerdy tech magazine called Information Week, so I read that too because it was like around. And, uh, and when I got bored in class, I would in my earphones listen to the news instead of the teacher. Wow. That's how much of a news junkie I was. Right. I, I, I was the copy aide, kind of an intern role at the Washington Post during my summers and even in the evenings during the school year. Did you ever like find yourself saying, I gotta go, I've gotta see the evening news, I've gotta leave right now? When I would come home from school, I would race to get home so I could watch Tom Brokaw and NBC Nightly News. No one's ever said that. <laughs> I'm an original, baby. I'm an original. <laughs> and I love Tom Brokaw. No, no diss to Tom Brokaw, yeah. but no one under 70 has ever said, <laughs> Where are, we've got to get home, Tom Brokaw's yeah. on with the Nightly News. And there was no DVRing back in the 80s then. No. So you really had to catch it live. You had to be there. Yes. You had to be committed. <laughs> yes. So uh, you grew up in DC, yeah. and tell me, uh, I'm curious, because I know that one of the causes that you're interested in is uh, statehood yeah. for D.C., yeah. something that means, means a lot to you. Let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about basic extension of human and constitutional rights to the residents of the United States. Which I'm States. against. Okay. You knew so, that when so you now, came. Right, yeah, but I thought maybe I could I wanted you. this to be a healthy debate. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, so let's talk about that because uh, one of the things that has been suggested many times is that uh, D.C. Uh, could be a state, mm -hmm. Puerto Rico, statehood for Puerto Rico, and this is a threatening concept. Yeah to uh, people in this country, talk about that. To Republican people, to white Republican people who mm -hmm. don't like the idea of black people voting, which is why that party has made it kind of an official policy to make it very hard for black people to vote. Listen, um, we in this nation were so serious about being represented by our government mm -hmm. that we took the previous government's tea and dumped it into the harbor. Like all the tea. And we were close to Britain at that time, so I think Americans, as they existed, loved tea. Yeah. It was a big sacrifice to right. take all that and send King George back. And we had a whole war over taxation without representation. And then in the seat of power, in our own government, in our own nation, we don't extend that to the people of D.C. And I take it personally because I grew up there, because mm -hmm. my mother grew up there, my father grew up there, my grandparents, in many cases, grew up there. And D.C. is full of people still mostly black people. Mm -hmm. A lot of them work for the federal government making all this stuff possible. And you want to take all those benefits and all those goodies, but not let those people have a real senator. We have a shadow senator. Yeah. That's like a bad joke. Right. So let's just, let's on with the democracy. Let's move. This should be an easy, this should be a gimme. We can't be proclaiming democracy all over the world and denying representation to the people in our own capital. Plus well, the people of Puerto, Puerto Rico. It's clear to me that the and I think to a lot of people, that there's um, fear is driving a lot of decisions uh -huh. uh, in, if, by people in this country. Yeah. Uh, and when I say people, I mean there are people that feel, and I think this has often been the case mm -hmm. historically, my way of life is being threatened. Right. And um, we need to hang on to our way of life. And these are all sort of coded phrases for we need to hang on to our power. Yeah. And the demographics in this country are changing, things are changing, and oh, wait a minute, parts of the South are, are voting for uh, Democrats, uh, and this is scary, and yeah. we're starting to lose our grip. And so it's fear, I think, is, 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 is that how you see it? I think fear is a great word, because a lot of folks in this country have been convinced that the system was great for them. Right. And that's a story. It's a, it's a convincing and compelling story powered by a bunch of propaganda 
like Confederate statues <laughs> as one small example and a bunch right. of lies. And the tragedy is that this lie has lived for so long that we should hoard all these resources for a few people that we could tell this story that those aren't even people. That's what we convinced ourselves of collectively. They're not even human, therefore do what you want. Deny them rights, kill them whenever you want to. And so the other side of that has also suffered, right? If you're living under this lie that you're better than everybody else, then mm -hmm. you think everything you got, you just deserved and worked hard. That's a, that's a painful miscalculation and misunderstanding of how the world works. And I think it limits what we can be. Because if folks let go of that fear, we can have a lot more stuff. We, we're talking about this in the podcast and how the citizen, because I think about it this way. People talk about how great America's been. Right? We want to go back to the good. We went to the moon. We defeated the Nazis. Imagine how much more we could have done if we let everybody in, right. let everybody participate. We could have been to Mars if we let women have bank accounts. You know what I mean? Like we could have done so many more greater things with the greatness that lies in all of our people. So I understand the fear because I'm a human being and I know there are things that I'm holding on to that I'm afraid to let go of. But I also know from personal experience that when you face that fear, you let it go, it's a great release and a great relief and it opens us up to the possibility of something bigger and better. So that's what I hope for us. It's part of why I do what I do through all the dark days and we're living through some darknesses all the time. The pandemic is not a fun time. Right. What's happening in Minneapolis and across the nation is not fun, but I see the potential to have a different narrative that isn't based in that fear you just talked about. You know, it's interesting because you're talking this year on the podcast about the economy yeah. and uh, the economic divide. And this is something I think about all the time. And yes, uh, you know, racial issues and racial divisions have been with us since the beginning, since the beginning of this country's, uh, you know, history. Yeah, it's written into our code. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it is literally written into the, the DNA yeah. of, our, of our constitution, sadly. Uh, uh, and, but what has happened more recently is the division between the haves and the have-nots is getting more and more extreme. It's getting to levels that probably exceed what we saw in the 1890s, you know, yeah. the Gilded Age, yeah. when well, people thought, well, that'll never happen again, where you have, you have occasional Rockefellers and then everyone else has nothing yeah. uh, and has to work their entire life and, and never get out of a slum. It feels like the, the people feel the middle class is slipping away. Mm -hmm. And this is a big part of what you're talking about this year on the podcast. Absolutely. I mean, January 6th was a dramatic moment in terms of the attack on the Capitol on our democracy. And if you didn't think we were divided before then, you saw that, and you're like, oh, I think we're a bit divided. Mm -hmm. And so what do we do about that? Do we talk about bipartisanship vaguely as some North Star? Or do we try to dig deeper into what is at the root of this? And I think it's not an either or thing. The racial, the, the kind of codification of racial discrimination and the excess and the separation of money and how we've done capitalism here, they're intertwined. We denied labor rights to certain people as we expanded them for others. The whole union movement was very segregated right. in the beginning. And now we see a concentration of power, handful of a few companies grabbing all the goodies, handful of people owning more than half the people. That's ridiculous. And we have this really perverse situation where folks are working really hard, one job, two job, three job, four, and still can't afford their homes. We've heard the argument, so many of us, uh, the system is rigged, it's winners versus losers, winners take all, I get all that, so what's the other way to do it? And it's, it's more democracy, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. It's more of us showing up. It's being citizens in an active sense, not just in this legal, I was born here sense. Right. When people are afraid, you know, to me, there's a lot of obstructionism. Yeah. When people get afraid, they cross their arms yeah. and they say, nope, nope, nope. And literally that's what's happening in the filibuster. Yeah. That's happening. That's what a lot of, I think, Mitch McConnell's about is no. And no, he, no, no. And, and not it's, even, he's not even, the part that I, um, I so sometimes want to like vilify all Republicans. Right. And then I have to check myself. Yeah. And I look at the numbers and you look at, you know, this voting anti-voting situation in, in Georgia. Mm -hmm. The majority of the people of Georgia didn't want that either. Right. There's a, in, in some cases, it's literally a handful of people mm -hmm. who are overriding the will of the people yeah. as 
pseudo duly elected representatives who chose their voters more than their voters got to choose them because of gerrymandering and all these other shenanigans, and they're forcing things down the people's throat. So we all have to wake up. I, I do look forward to a real debate with an actual Republican, if we could find one. I don't think Mitch McConnell's actually representing them many of the time. Sometimes he is, and I will disagree with that too. But a lot of times what the leadership is doing isn't reflective of what the people want. Right. And that's exactly how we got ourselves into the situation in the first place. That's why we put that T in the harbor, because those leaders were not responsive to or representing what the people wanted. Yeah, I saw the other day this uh, clip online, and it was this, uh, it was Charles Barkley. Mm -hmm. And he said in his heart, he really believes most people are good. Uh, he thinks that it's, there are people in this country who can divide us yeah. by, and he said, to be fair, on the right and the left, there are people that can divide us by just getting us whipped up on hating the other side. Yeah. It helps polarize us and we can't get anything done. And he actually felt like there was more we could accomplish that we're not as far apart as we think we are. Yeah. And I thought that was a very hopeful message, you know? And it's true. Um, there's an organization called Beyond Conflict and they have worked in literally war-torn societies all over the world for decades and the aftermath of civil wars, that's real division. When folks are taking up guns and machetes and lobbing IEDs at each other, right? okay. So they have done studies there and practices to bring folks together. And what they found here in the US is that we're not as divided as we think we are. And the way they did it, they asked, for example, Democrats, what do you think Republicans think of you as a Democrat? And on a scale of one, they hate me, 10, they want to marry me and have all my babies. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, Democrats, oh, they, they feel a one toward me. They want to destroy yeah, me. Right. And then they said, Republicans, what do you think of Democrats? And it was like, I don't know, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> right. It's like there's a gap. There's a distortion. Yeah. There's, a, there's a perception distortion and, that's happening. And that's happening. where leadership matters. Yeah. That's why I was so excited about Joe Biden, who I was, I was not riding for Joe Biden. I was more of a Bernie type of person. Right. And, but I respected Joe Biden's awareness of his power to lead by language, by example, by channeling what's in all of us. There's good in all of us. Yeah. There is bad in all of us. And someone can pull one lever or the other yep. and whip us into that frenzy yeah. that you talked about, yeah. or they can say, hey, that person's kind of similar to you. Yeah. I think we might be in this more together than apart. Why do we play that part up? Right. And uh, so yeah, we're, it's not as bad in some cases as it seems. It is still real, and, it is, and that's the kind of the complexity. It's like, I'm not trying to say, we're already united, everything's great. It's not great, yeah. it just isn't. And to be, and could be and, better. And to be fair, I've, there's stuff I make it a practice to, I will tune in to Fox to see mm. what they're saying. Oh, bless you. Um, well, I just, I want to support them in any way I can. Do you have a timer, or what's the, uh, yeah. <laughs> how do you manage the It's intake? a feeling you get inside. Yeah. Uh, it helps me digest my I food. do tiny doses, you what, know, like people I do. dose LSD, I like dose Fox News. Yeah. <laughs> micro, <laughs> micro A micro dose, dose of micro Fox dose News of Fox is news. terrific. Yeah. It, uh, it raises the, uh, the blood pressure in a way that's quite healthy. Yeah. Um, no, I like to see, I like to flip around and see how different people are covering the same story, yeah. and I'll get irritated when I see sometimes CNN doing the same thing or MSNBC doing a version of what they're doing on Fox News, just the opposite tact yeah. and harping on the negative. Yeah. And I think, I do think sometimes that, yes, there's money in the extremes. There's mm -hmm. money to be made in the extremes. Mm -hmm. And the money is in extreme opinions on the left and on the right. And that's what whips people into this negative state sometimes, which bums and, me out. And I think it's also a lack of imagination on the part of people trying to make that money. Right. You look at social media, which has turned this all up to 11, and how it amplifies disagreements, and there's profit in that, and it's laziness. Right. There's, there's a different algorithm, which doesn't have us grabbing pitchforks, trying to stab the other person in the eye. Yeah. They just stumbled on the cheap one first, I think. Yes. I certainly hope. It's but the I'm, first thought. Yeah. It's not the, like, the best thought is the always easy the money. first thought. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, let's evolve. Let's do right. better than that. Maybe let's have more people involved who are impacted by these systems in the right. first place. Again, democracy, there I go. You know, the people having power and a say over the systems that influence them. That's the ticket through most of this stuff. Right. It was funny. I was driving to work yesterday, and this truck drove by me, and it was like uh -huh. the guy was honking his horn. I mean, just in general at anybody. And he had a giant flag 
and the flag said, socialism sucks, and, it, and uh, exclamation point, and this flag coming out of, in, out of his car, and I thought, who's forcing socialism on you? Like, I think socialism for this guy is a buzzword for anyone who doesn't agree completely with yeah. his narrow agenda, yeah. is socialism. I, I kind of wanted to run him off the road and say, explain socialism to me, and he probably wouldn't be able to. <laughs> socialism is the, uh, the public hospital he gets taken to yeah. after you run him off the road. Right, exactly. And you have to deny that service if yeah. you hate socialism Wait so a minute, much. is this for free? Yes, yeah. forget it. Send that stimulus check back too. <laughs> and also while you're at it, get off this public road, sir. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the socialist demonstration <laughs> of engineering. <laughs> I don't want anybody fixing these roads. That's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you say that there are, uh, very simple like ways to citizen, like three or four ways to citizen. Can you give them to me in a nutshell so I can then maybe do one of them, <laughs> but not all three it's, or four? They're, they're conceptual. And I, I speak in we a lot when okay. I talk about this show. I say, we thought about this and we, my wife is my like partner in architecting how we approach the subject. Oh wait, we, so you and your wife agree on things. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. Let's that. switch chairs. Let's switch chairs. <laughs> can I talk to you for seven hours, please? You can absolutely do that. We'll make time, Cody. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we wanted to make sure that we weren't just making stuff up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can't be easy. Just turn on the microphone and just tell right. people things. And so it's like, what do we believe that this word should mean? If we interpret citizen as a verb, four things. It means we show up and participate. It's an up. active thing. Yep. So just show up. Do something. Get mm -hmm. in the game. Yeah. Second, it means we recognize that we are dependent on others, that we need each other. So we invest in relationships with other people. You can't citizen alone. I remember when the US had this motto for the army, army of one. That didn't make a lot of sense to me because that's not an army. That's right. a dude with a gun. And also, no one's afraid of an army of one. No, that's just, <laughs> oh, that's Jerry. <laughs> you know? All right, you've asked for it. We're it, sending Jerry. Yeah, in. no one's intimidated by right. Jerry. So we need other people, so let's work on that and invest in other people and our relationships. The third is really important is understanding our power. Mm -hmm. And I think so much, so many times, um, our power as citizens gets reduced to voting. It's like you have amazing power as citizens in a democracy and your, your power is to give that power to someone else. Right. Every two or four years and hope they do a good job. Maybe harass them by faxing them every now and then with your demands. We can spend our money in certain ways. We associate with people or not. We share certain ideas or not. We gather physically in protests or celebration. That's all forms of power. So we need to understand that power. That's the third. And the last is we do all this for the benefit of the many, not just the few. And uh, our first guest in the first season, a brilliant woman named Valerie Kaur, wrote this book called See No Stranger. Mm -hmm. And the idea was, a stranger is a part of me I do not yet know. So let me treat everybody as a part of myself. Let me love myself, let me love others, let me even love my opponents. And through that act of love, not the sentimental kind, but a deeper civic kind of love, right. we can move this whole thing forward. So if everybody is connected, if we're all in this together, then when we do things for the many, socialist leaning things like public roads or hospitals or education or healthcare, then we're doing it for ourselves too. I love that, that a stranger is the part of me I don't know. I absolutely love that. Valerie Kaur said it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It can be misused if you're getting everything too close can. to someone on a bus. <laughs> everything, everything. <laughs> That's everything. what I'm gonna use from now on when women are like, hey, back off, pal. You're the part of me I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for stopping in. Thank Seriously, you for this has me. been fantastic. It's beautiful, it's chill. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is about as, I'm highly medicated. Um, <laughs> Thank you for being here and classing up the joint a little bit. Yeah. Uh, season two of How to Citizen with Baratunde is now available on all podcast platforms. And it's a rare thing. It's a podcast doing some good, something I'm clearly not in favor of. <laughs> <laughs> and if folks want to learn more, they can, yeah. they can go to the website. We have howtocitizen.com. We're rolling out more features. It's a podcast. But we're also, I think we really believe in helping people through this. Because I know from personal experience, I wanted to do more. Yeah. There's so many people. I mean, scientists were marching, Conan. Like, people want to do stuff. There's yep. so, people are popping up refrigerators to feed people in their communities. What else can we do? So we're yeah. asking and trying to answer that question with the, with the people. All right, well, thank you so much, Baratunde Thurston, and uh, 
Let's do this again. Conan O'Brien, you got yourself a deal. And I'm sorry for running you off the road that time. It was you in the car. Yeah. I didn't realize you were so passionate Mass about Mass socialism sucks. <laughs>